If anyone is familiar with metaphysics, you understand that the C often stands for a group of people. Metaphysically, you're talking about people, lake, sea, those things. Now, when it says, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, I'm going to go on and jump down to 14. It says, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And this was the second death. Now, obviously there was a first death. The death came to the mind by this book, by its misteachings and misguided directions that people really feel are the words of God. It's not their fault, but some that know it is their fault. When it says death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, the lake. Remember now, it was a sea before. Now it's a lake. A lake is smaller than a sea. So if if we look at sea as people. The sea would encompass everybody or the total populace at the time. Now, the lake is minus a specific people because it's smaller than the total populace. And who are those specific people? I'll go ahead and say the Jews. Now, when they took themselves out of the lake, when they gave up the dead, which were in it, as it says in 13, that means they got out of the chaos that was in the world at the time. And they kept to themselves and they studied the book of life, which was handed to them by the Egyptians. Or I hate saying Egyptians because that's a Greek name by the ancient Kemetic society, which were black. Now, when it says in death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, that means when you deliver up death and hell, that means you raise it up. You bring it to life or you bring it back to being. I won't say life. You bring it back to being. And if it never existed, you bring it to being from out of itself. So this relates to if you are a parent. And you live a tumultuous life and you are ignorant to the fact of the wisdom that you should possess about self and about the world and about this child that's on the way. When you have that child, the child not only psychologically felt these emotions inside of you, but you also are ignorant to the fact of what you should be doing in life. So therefore, you pass that ignorance to the child unbeknownst. So therefore, you're delivering that death and hell, that chaos and that ignorance to that child and you don't even know it. And this is the purpose for this book. The ignorance to, to, to raise death, but it's also to dissect people. When it said they were cast into the lake of fire, when you are cast into the lake of fire, that means you are increasing. You are drawn in to the ignorance and to the chaos, to the turmoil, to the, the fighting, the warring. Whatever tore the civilization apart at the time, you're torn into that. Now, I spoke about in the beginning how this book was not meant for Christians, honestly. But even more so, it's not meant for blacks. We're going to go back to Genesis and we're going to jump to Genesis. Chapter nine. And we're going to discuss the, the three sons of Noah. Before we get back to that verse of Revelations, and I can describe to you what I'm talking about. We'll start with Genesis 9, verse 18. And it says, And the sons of Noah, or Noah, went forth the ark, were Shem, Ham, which some mispronounce as Ham, and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. Now, it's very peculiar why Shem and Japheth they were not further described as far as their lineage that were to come from them. But Ham is and is described as the father of Canaan. Now it says that these are the three sons of Noah and of them, the whole earth overspread. So this means that everybody in this world is from Shem, Ham or Japheth. Again, this is not literal. So please, this is symbolic. Now it says, and I think you will want to think this is symbolic because this next verse, you I don't think you will really want it to be literal. It said, and Noah began to be a husbandman and he planted a vineyard and he drank of the wine and was drunken and he was uncovered within his tent. So basically he got drunk and fell asleep in his tent naked 
Like I said, I don't think you want to know that that's literal. I think you want to understand what that means. Now it says, and Ham, the father of Canaan, again, reiterated, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without, which would be Shem and Japheth. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon their shoulders and went backward, key word, and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward, key word, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and he knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. And guess what? And Canaan shall be his servant. Now, we all know Noah, you know, was, he built the ark, had all the animals, two of two, on the ark. So the Lord could send the deluge and destroy the earth because he was angry with his creation and it will start again from Noah. So, again, the whole earth was spread with Shem, Ham and Japheth. Now, again, blacks, this book is not for you. Literally, because first off. This book was not written in Africa. It got its roots from Africa and Kemet, but it was written in the Roman Empire and in in certain parts of the Middle East and whatnot. So this book is not for us. And if you are teaching that this book, Christian book, is for us, then therefore you are agreeing and teaching the fact that slavery was perfectly justified by the Bible. Okay, so now they say the educator is speaking out of his head. No, I'm speaking out of the sons of Noah. When he said that he was uncovering his tent, Noah was. Ham saw his father and he went out and told his two brethren. Now, naked is something that's uncovered, but it can also mean uncivilized. It says, and Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward. Get to that key word and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward. We are going to get to that key word and they saw not their father's nakedness. What is something that's back- backward? If they're walking with the tent, imagine two people holding a tent, I mean, a, a garment over their shoulders, walking backwards into a tent to cover the father that they didn't want to see naked. No, this obviously means if naked stands for uncivilized or primitive or something that is out in the open, exposed, naked means exposed. Then if it is covered, then therefore it is no longer exposed. So the two sons walked in and covered their father who was previously exposed. Now, the fact that they walked in backwards and their faces were backward, that means they are walking in one direction and they are looking in another. So therefore, that is the definition of deception. If I point my finger and tell you to go that way and I'm looking another way and I'm walking that way, guess what? We're not going in the same direction. Ham was the only one that saw his father for what it truly was. And because of that, his brothers had to come and cover him. Now, Noah didn't even like the fact that Ham had gone in there to see that he was naked and passed out drunken on the floor of a tent. And had the decency to go tell his brothers who brought the garment in. He didn't like that. So when he awoke from his wine, he knew that his younger brother where his younger son, excuse me, had done unto them. One word of of, of fact here. In Hebrew, this book is, this portion written in Hebrew. In Hebrew, each word has a numerical value. The numerical value for the word wine is the same as the numerical value for the word secret. Wine is yain. Secret is sold. So you can interchange those whenever those words are written. So if you do interchange it, it says, and Noah began to be a husbandman and he planted a secret, not just a secret one, but a whole vineyard, which was an entire repertoire of secrets. You may as well say, for lack of a better word. 